I'm absolutely delighted to introduce uh, Jeff Holt for the next Global 20 interview. Um, for those that know, uh, Jeff is quite a remarkable individual and has done so much in the charitable sector. Uh, the issue we're going to do a bit of a deep dive on today in this interview is about disability charities and how they may differ. Uh, I don't think it's an issue we've had a lot of research done, so I'm really intrigued to hear more from Jeff's experience. But a number of issues to cover, Jeff. But first of all, I think maybe it would be great for those that are dialing in maybe the first time and don't know your story to hear a little bit about your story and um, and also what led you to found uh, Wet Wheels as one of the many charitable organisations that you've been involved and founded and, and set up. So, Jeff, tell us a bit more about your story. Thank you, Ben. Thank you uh, for that kind introduction. So, yeah, my story, well, um, I guess it starts like all stories um, at the beginning. Um, effectively, uh, I grew up um, and spent my childhood and my, my formative years sailing. So sailing is very much the thread that runs through my story. Um, I unfortunately had an accident when I was uh, 18, 19 years old, which broke my neck and put me in a wheelchair. And at the time I thought that was the, the end of my sailing career. Um, but over the last 30, 40 years since that moment, um, I've rebuilt my life uh, very much around uh, 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 with sailing continuing to be the thread, um, getting out on the water for personal pleasure, but also supporting other people with disabilities to, to get afloat. Um, I also had a professional career parallel to this with Deloitte um, in, in marketing and business development. And, uh, and I was able to combine those skills. Um, some 10, 15 years ago, I put, put all of that together and I, um, I was very successful um, and in, in completing a couple of sailing adventures. Um, I was the first disabled person to sail around Great Britain on my own. And a couple of years later, I sailed across the Atlantic Ocean um, in, a, in a yacht um, unassisted. So that was to give me a platform um, which was an, to enable me to try and do more, to, to um, give disabled people a voice um, and try and enable more people to enjoy the freedom of being out on the water. Um, and that's what I've been doing for the last 10, 15 years. And that's with Wet Wheels as well. So tell us a bit more about Wet Wheels and uh, how you set it up. What does it do as a charity and how you set up that? So Wet Wheels is fundamentally, uh, it's a way of getting disabled people out on the water who couldn't um, otherwise get out on, onto you know, a, a maritime environment. Now there's lots of sailing charities that do that, but there are a number of disabled people who either cannot or do not want to sail. Um, and when you look at the options there, there, there were none. Um, or very, very few limited options. So I founded Wet Wheels to, to make that possible. Um, effectively, we have a fleet um, and it is fast becoming an, am an armada um, <laughs> of Wet Wheels boats. We have just announced Wet Wheels number eight. Um, we are a series of power boats that, um, that go offshore, take disabled people of all ages, all disabilities out onto the water um, with their friends and family. So it's a shared experience. Um, and perhaps more, most importantly, everyone gets to drive the boat. So for a moment in time, they can forget about their disability and, um, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and drive a, a quarter of a million pound power boat at 30 knots um, under supervision, I should say. It's an absolutely phenomenal uh, charity, Jeff, and uh, congratulations on everything you've done in the team. I think you've also been on the board of RNLI and um, Sailability and various different other charities that organisations that you've been involved in. So. Uh, really, on the issue of philanthropy and uh, and charity, and we, and we talked about this, um, my observation has been, and maybe this is not uh, totally grounded in evidence, but it certainly is my instinct, that, um, you know, charities that deal with disabled issues often at the back of the queue, they're often sort of things that people give because they emotionally connect and they say, right, well, I'll do that. It's quite transactional. It's what we would traditionally call maybe more of a charitable act than a philanthropic act. Um, and more immediate. Um, but what's your experience been in, in the space in terms of trying to raise money? And that's the first issue we'd be very interested to, to, to address in terms of this balance between, say, philanthropy, which is long-term and sustainable, versus charity in the disabled uh, charitable sector. I'd just be interested to know what your experience has been. It, so it's, it's, a really, it's a really interesting um, uh, question, Ben, because you... I mean, when you break down philanthropy and, and charity, 
you want you know they often break down into sectors so whether that's health whether that's environment whether that's you know it may be um you know an intervention to um, the penal system to stop people reoffending um and then you have kind of disability which is often tagged on to the end so um and with disability comes health so that it kind of splits 50 50 so you have half of the people supporting disability tend to be uh, looking for cures um, or for remedies to to a particular disability and then you have the activity led um, uh, 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 support so my experience because i've sat on the board of the rnli i've sat on the board of the royal yachting association um, i've sat on other boards i founded rya sustainability um, i was the inaugural chairman of that and other charities you charity is often seen as the the uh you know if you open the the annual report of a company under csr at the last page there'll be something about disability and how uh, an organization is supporting disability it's always on the back pages of the newspapers disability it's always the bit that's tagged on so assuming that disability uh and i would say has every much um uh, is every much as credible as any other organization looking for funding um, we have to kind of differentiate ourselves. And um, there is this big suggestion that, um, well, it's a, through experience, that charitable giving is very short term. Um, it, it really is. It, it's kind of, oh, can we apply for some funding to help us deliver activity X? And that may be one, two, or you know, if you're lucky, three years. Philanthropy is about the long game. And um, and that's perhaps easier to demonstrate to philanthropists if you are a, a health intervention or you are a you know looking for a, a cure for spinal cord injury. You know that's clearly not going to happen in three years. Um, it may it will take many many years. So that whole philanthropic support for charitable objectives um, tends to be harder to uh, to accomplish. I mean, I think this is a very interesting subject, um, uh, Jeff, and I, and I remember your first talk explaining around uh, the, the Wet Wheels journey and your own personal journey that led you to, to found uh, Wet Wheels. Actually, I think uh, it was at our uh, first Talking Philanthropy, which um, was, was uh, some 2016, all those years back. Um, you subsequently, uh, we're very pleased, were a recipient of the uh, Philanthropy Award in later years and spoke as well at later events um, and it's always been a, an emotional journey hearing about the work that you've done and your own personal story but maybe you could tell us a little bit more about the uniqueness of wet wheels because I think if you're talking about philanthropy and long-term and sustainability wet wheels is a brilliant example of how this uh, organization is, is is really structured in a way uh, that donations and gifts to wet wheels uh, can really take a long view so I just wonder, maybe you could give us an, an insight into your thinking behind Wet Wheels and how you think it differs in terms of well, a, a disabled charity. So having set up and founded charities before, I'm very conscious that certainly in the UK, there is a charity mindset in the way that charities operate. They rely heavily on volunteers. Um, and with volunteers comes the challenge of everyone has or feels they have a right to um, have their opinion heard. Um, the charity model in sailing and dis disabled boating was has always been very much, you know, a Tuesday morning, a Saturday afternoon, and that's it. Um, well, I wanted something different with Wet Wheels. So rather than set, although we have a, a national charity which oversees the charity, the, the Wet Wheels Foundation, every one of my operating um, or, um, bases is a social enterprise. We are community interest companies um, set up um, limited by guarantee. And what that means is that we run us, we run us not for profit businesses. And that mindset that I had from back in Deloitte of you know, um, customer focus, the importance of brand, the importance of um, you know, delivering, the, the delivery had to be um, the same, whether you got on a wet wheels in Portsmouth or a wet wheels in Yorkshire, the experience had to be the same for our, our guests. And that could only come about with a corporate mindset. And what that's enabled us to do is to change the way we approach funding. So yes, we still have the charitable bid writing that happens. Um, you know, please sir, may I have some money to help us take disabled people out on a trip. Um, but I'm able to 
particularly tap into my philanthropic um, network, my, um, my experience, my commercial experience, and we have a strategic development board now who, um, will, who actively seek out long-term strategic relationships, not just with individuals, but with organizations who share our vision and goals. And they're very much about integration, inclusivity, um, you know, uh, professionalism, and ultimately changing people's lives by giving them a trip out on a boat. Now that you might say, well, how does that work? Well, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're reinforcing their confidence, you're reducing their anxiety, you're giving someone who otherwise would never have the opportunity to see an experience of being out on the water, um, that opportunity to do so with their friends and family. And in a very small way, it's part of their patchwork of life experiences, and it's a high value experience. Um, and we know it makes a difference. So that, that's come about through this strategic long-term thinking and development plan. And I was very interested um, to talk to your chair quite recently, and he was talking potentially about the idea of building an endowment, which is, you know, would be phenomenal if you, and I would imagine a, if you had a, a multi-million pound endowment, you could really, really secure, uh, you know, the future and the, the funding in a very different way. So I'm, I'm interested to hear more about that. But it seems to me that you know, your model is quite remarkable, Jeff, and, and maybe that's why it's so been so successful of that sustainable model where the philanthropist, I think the philanthropist, I, I, am I right, buys the boat, donates to the boat, builds the boat, and that's a critical part in terms of the infrastructure. You don't have any debt, is that right? No loans or... Yeah, so, so the organisation has, you know, getting on for nearly £2 million pounds worth of boats, um, and we have no debt, no borrowing, no, nothing whatsoever. Um, and that, it, it's a bit strange. It, it, the raising the capital for the cost of a boat is almost the easy bit. You know, it's never easy raising a quarter of a million quid, but um, uh, you know, it, it te people tend to like support capital to support capital projects. The challenge is always the operational revenue um, ongoing costs, and it's that that if we if we can build a um, you know a, a sort of a fund uh, an endowment pot um, that we can then use to fund the the, the the annual activity for what we do um, then that's just going to take all that pressure off i can spend more time giving people fantastic experiences than sitting at my desk writing bids at six o'clock in the morning um, but look it ultimately it's about um you know the, the whole charity sector i think needs to rethink itself i think it needs to look at that the, the charity model that what the charity commission have something called you know we're set up as charities but there are also charity incorporated organizations cios there's the cic model which is the model i've uh, route i've taken um i think charities going to have to start looking at the way they operate because you know there is a there is a pot of money um that's shared between organizations and we need to rethink how we approach and um promote what we do um, and convince philanthropists to join us for the long, you know, the end game, um, not just for a couple of trips out next month. Jeff, yeah, that's um, fascinating. Um, and, and in terms of the other issue that I wanted to talk to you about, which is about uh, leadership and board leadership on uh, charitable organisations, the wider uh, issue of how boards uh, make sure there's representation. I think this is something that I'd be very interested to to hear from you. I, and I think. Um, uh, I've read that something like 15 to 20 percent of the entire population will be uh, will, will have some issue that they're that they're dealing with in terms of disabled issue. So it's a significant uh, proportion of the population, and yet how often is that represented on boards? And I just think this is a really interesting subject, and and maybe the, the, the topic of a future talk in philanthropy uh, to actually look at this whole area of sustainability, but also board membership. And I just wondered if you had any thoughts on this subject um, and and insight into this subject about how charities can make sure there's representation and what's your experience being? Yeah, well, interestingly, um, it, not just charities, Ben. Um, ultimately, I think boards, th th there's a big drive, isn't there, with equality, diversity and inclusion to, to make sure bit boards look different. Um, when you see a photo of the board, everyone kind of looks different in some way. Um, ultimately, uh, it's about, I think, uh, diversity of, of experience and thought. Um, however, what, what that might to contradict that argument, if you are a particular gender or if you are from a particular you know, um, culture, 
or you happen to have a disability, your lived life experience of that is unique. Someone else who doesn't have sit in a wheelchair all day like me does not have that lived life experience. So I think having diverse boards is essential um, because otherwise you're having people without those lived life experiences, whether it's disability, whether it's um, you know through culture, whether it's through gender, um, making decisions that, that affect us. Um, and I think it's healthy that we should have more diverse boards, but you know, I, I, I'm with you, Ben. I sit on a couple of boards, and um, and you know, and I, but I see an awful lot of other boards that that are not represented, um, particularly around you know um, leisure, for example, um, and entertainment, where people with disabilities aren't represented. Which you know, when you're trying, twenty percent of a market is twenty percent of a market, and you know, and we don't just we're not just twenty percent. We bring our friends and family with us when we go to the cinema, or we, you know, we go go to uh, an event uh, at a theatre um so you know it, it's kind of the uh it's using the economic argument rather than the the legal um status and protection we have with the equalities act and i think it's far better to convince people that way jeff it's an absolute pleasure we're out of our 20 minutes now so um i have to draw this to a close but i mean lots of food for thought and certainly we should recircle back on this i mean i know we've done themes around talking philanthropy, which are all on YouTube, around leadership, about mission, women in philanthropy. We found there was very little research on that when we looked at that subject at length. Again, that's all there. Um, it seems to me that this is something that we should really look at in, in future because we need to know more and uh, commend you for the incredible work you've done with Wet Wheels because I think it's a phenomenal charity for those out there that are hearing for the first time. Please do look it up um, because it is an incredible charity because of your sustainability model which is about how to propel the charity forward um in terms of how you use philanthropy to get it going but then propel it on its own model which i think is a is a fantastic model and also does incredible work which affects the lives of quite literally thousands um, of family and and wheelchair wheelchair users and many others are, are in the sector so congratulations on everything you've done uh, jeff thank you very much for this interview um and look forward to hearing more on this subject Thank you, Ben. Thanks for having me.